where do you sort of sit on the use of iodine in the setting of Hashimoto's? Um, are you generally for or against, or as an individual sort of basis? Like, where do you sit on that? So again, you know, like, you know, iodine, as you said, is such a controversial thing. And, you know, like, you know, too, too little of iodine definitely causes Hashimoto's, too mm -hmm. much of it's, you know, causing Hashimoto's. Mm -hmm. The problem that I encounter most of the time is that we do not have a perfect test to check for iodine in persons, you know, like, you know, yeah. blood test is not accurate, you know, even 24 hour urine iodine, first of all, it's such a cumbersome test to do. Mm -hmm. And again, it can give us some indication, but again, it's not a perfect test. So what I have come to conclusion is that, you know, I generally try to give iodine, you know, not as a supplement form, but as a food form. Mm -hmm. So I encourage all of my folks, if they can tolerate the food, which are high in iodine and a lot of seafoods, you know, like the sea uh, vegetables and things, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. they can use it. Then that's what I recommend doing them. So I can give them enough iodine and I'm not overdoing it because a lot of those supplements, you know, like will have a lot of iodine, which can be huge quantities. Mm -hmm. And plus sometimes they might be getting it from the food aspect too. So I've seen the other ways of things. So I'm on the more conservative side. So I generally try to get it as much from the food rather than the supplements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's a, a really good approach, to be honest. Um, I, I have, you know, no issues with that approach. My, my general approach has been, I like to have a quantification of, of how much you're getting. And sometimes some of the seafoods have variability in terms of how much is in, you know, per quantity, per gram or whatever. And then I also, um, sometimes there's a, uh, uh, let's say, a disagreement in terms of how much, or maybe a misunderstanding of how much people are actually eating, right? It's because we don't think about generally our foods in terms of grams. Um, and it's like, okay, did I eat two or three grams of seaweed? And if one gram has 50 micrograms and I consume four grams, you, you know, it's kind of, it kind of gets confusing. So I do like the idea of supplementation just so that you can get an exact amount um, by not getting too much or too little, but I absolutely appreciate the idea of getting it naturally from your food if you can, right? That makes a lot of sense. That's kind of how, how it's been forever. And I think that that's a great approach. Um, but it sounds like um, and I kind of fit in this camp too, that, that too little bad, too much bad, somewhere in the middle needs to be kind of where we're at, some sort of Goldilocks zone. And figuring that out can be difficult. And I just did a long blog post and video on the topic of iodine testing. There really isn't a good test. So if you're listening to this, um, like Dr. Gupta said, there, there really isn't a good one. Um, there are several different ways to check for it, but all of them have their inconsistencies and inaccuracies, and they don't always give you the information you think you're getting. And one of the most frustrating things that I see on my end is people will say, oh, I ordered this test. Um, and I have too much of this thing. And I'm like, well, yeah, but you got to make sure the test is actually accurate. There, there are a whole different ways to test for nutrients and, and other things in the body mold even, but they don't always give you the information you think you're getting from them. And so the interpretation of those results are, it's very important. Um, did you have anything to add on that before we go to the next topic or is that pretty much good? I think that's, that's actually accurate. You know, like, okay. you know, people get, really get worried once when they, they see the result of myodin is so high. Okay. That's the reason mm -hmm. I've got Ashimoto's, you know, this, right. This particular doctor, like this particular person kind of gave me Hashimoto's. I said, no, 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 mm. you already had Hashimoto's. Yes, you know, like this test is not the perfect, but you know, you have to interpret the test in the right manner. Mm. So that's where it's very important because, you know, like right now we are in an age that patients can order the testing on their own and, you know, mm. they get spit out a lot of information, which are just kind of, you know, uh, from a computer spitting out the information. And a lot of people start using those and implementing those. But what they don't realize is that this can be actually harmful. You know, if you use those, in, because these supplements are not just kind of candies that people can, you know, eat and you know, they, they have no effects on their body. Mm -hmm. So I've seen people actually getting worse by trying these protocols and doing things on their own when they don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So very important to work with a professional or at least get the information that you should be getting before, you know, you do things on your own. 100% mm -hmm. agree. And I, I have absolutely seen people that, that cause more harm than good in trying things. Absolutely. Um, and it sounds like you have as well. Let's, let's move on to the topic of thyroid medication. So we talked... I think we talked a lot of good, uh, good things about uh, root causes, about managing those root causes, the various types. Where does thyroid medication fit into this whole thing of treating Hashimoto's to you? Do you consider it a treatment to Hashimoto's? Because I have seen some people with antibody reduction as a result of using it. Um, I've also seen people who try to avoid natural desiccated thyroid with the idea that perhaps it stimulates the immune system and stimulates the antibody production. Um, or are you just using it as a way to, let's say, um, manage symptoms to boost up thyroid function until you can sort of naturally uh, improve thyroid function through the therapies we talked about? Where where do you kind of sit on that? So I think, you know, like I determine it again on a person to person basis, depending on where they are in the disease process. If they're very early in the disease process, the medicines are very low dosage that is needed. Mm -hmm. I generally don't start them on medicines mm -hmm. because those people actually, we have an opportunity to safeguard their thyroid and we can actually reset the thyroid back to normal so that it can function on their own. Mm -hmm. Now, some people come to see me, okay, I have this Hashimoto's for 10 years or 20 years. Most of the time, the thyroid is almost destroyed. Mm -hmm. So they will need some kind of medicine on board to kind of support the thyroid hormone that is needed for their body. 
for various reasons about it. Then obviously I go with a natural approach, you know, of natural desiccated thyroid, which has a boost of T3 and a T4, and which is good for them. Mm-hmm. And I, what I've seen is that, you know, if, you know, like the immune function thing, you know, that we get worried about, okay, well, the natural desiccated thyroid sometimes can, you know, trigger an immune response. We don't see it very often. Mm-hmm. We see it only in situations, again, when the bodies not have been prepared for it. Mm-hmm. You know, bodies who, have, who are very inflamed already, already have leaky gut, already are toxic. Those are the, you know, like people who will get triggered, you know, by doing those desiccated thyroid. But if you've addressed the other issues and then, you know, we do the desiccated thyroid along with it, those people never react to them and actually do good with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, I think that's definitely what I've seen as well. Um, in the beginning, I, I sort of just put, if anyone had low thyroid function when I was first starting practicing, uh, I'm not practicing anymore, but when I originally started, I would just throw everyone on NDT. And I would see occasionally, very rarely, uh, starting someone on NDT would spike antibodies. Um, and so uh, I have seen it. And usually in those situations back then when I didn't know that much, I'd be like, okay, well, let's take it with some enzymes. Let's help with the digestion. I thought it was a digestion issue. And I'm like, okay, well, let's try it with some enzymes, help things break down um, and see if that works. But it definitely has the potential to do that. But I think it's pretty exceedingly rare. And I think you hit the nail on the head when you when you said, I think it's a result of other issues that are untreated, right? I think it's the the gut that's been, hasn't been addressed appropriately or digestive issues or uh, inflammation that exists there already. Um, and even if it does, there are other still medications that you can use. So I think um, if I could distill essentially what you said, you said in the beginning, low doses, if anything, are necessary. But the whole point is should be to try and fix the immune aspect to reduce the damage on the thyroid so that it can function by itself, right? That's that's generally the idea if I'm, if I'm following that correctly. That's yeah. correct. You know, as I said, initially that, that works really good for my clients and we can mm-hmm. do it. But you know, once that initial phase is gone for the long-term basis of the patient are coming from after like 10 plus years, or their are medications which are like more than 100 mics, you know, of daily mm-hmm. basis, then those are the patients that they definitely need some kind of medicine. They're definitely going to be lower dosage, mm-hmm. but definitely some kind of medicine on board. Yeah, because over time, if Hashimoto's is left untreated, it does result in some element, some amount of permanent damage to the thyroid gland, which is evidence, or you can see on ultrasonography. So if you look at an ultrasound and you see a, a, a atrophied thyroid gland, that's usually evidence that some destruction has occurred. And as far as we know, there are some salvageable, salvageable amount of thyroid tissue that exists when it's inflamed, but sometimes it can be permanently destroyed. And to my knowledge, there are some potential uh, emerging therapies that may be used to help regrow some tissues, but there's no good therapy as far as I'm aware that helps regrow thyroid gland tissue in those settings, which means you'll end up on thyroid medication. So moral of the story is catch your Hashimoto's early, make sure you get tested for it and get treatment as aggressive as you possibly can in the beginning. So you don't have to live that life downstream. Does you kind of agree with that the general statement? Absolutely. Yes.